where we are today, um, you know, we have a, a population of about 70% of Americans that want to be vaccinated, um, but there's not enough supply of the vaccine in the marketplace. In fact, two thirds of Americans are not happy with the rollout. While we've made considerable strides with the movable middle, uh, convincing that middle, the people who are on the fence about the, taking the vaccine into the category of being willing to take it, we still have a long way to go. Um, so there's still a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done to convince people to fight the aspects of fear that may be uh, present around the vaccine. And that's really where the healthcare marketer comes into being an important part uh, in making sure that we get to the full vaccination. So where does data targeting fit into that? Yeah, so it's a great question. You know, we, we have seen that actually when we talk about targeting, we talk about advertising as a mode, get people to do better things for their health. You know, we've seen that actually demographics is actually three times more important in getting people to actually go on to a prescription or take a drug than even the creative messaging itself. So because of this, this, you know, this importance of making sure that you have the right message in front of the right audience, we've seen a, the necessity of data to help us understand who we need to reach and with what message we need to reach them with. You know, I think universally, most of the, most of the vaccine resistors go back to a sense of fear around the vaccine. And there's really three ways that we can help uh, you know, reduce those fears. And that's through evidence, optimism, and transparency. Chris, tell us um, about um, reaching people who are underserved, communities, um, you know, sort of it's a, uh, we, we talk a lot about targeted marketing and addressable audiences. Uh, what does that mean? And what's the importance um, for the vaccine manufacturers? Yeah, so every, there's parts of the population that have you know, different sorts of concerns, different fears about what the vaccine may have. Um, while now we know that the science is sound and we know that the vaccine is safe, and now we have four vaccines on market, there still is this undercurrent of fear that we have to address through messaging. And I mentioned uh, evidence, evidence, optimism, and transparency being those three kind of key points that our messaging today has to, has to address. So what we need to do in order to really move the middle, the movable middle, we have to find messaging that hits those three, those three elements and addresses the different fears that are, that are interspersed right throughout the population, because you know, one demographic might have a different set of concerns than another demographic. And that's really where data comes in is being able to identify and help to actually reach those, those pockets of populations across the United States and to make sure that the message is most resident personalized and custom, not hitting someone with the generic messaging, but being very targeted uh, about the specific concerns that an individual might have about the vaccine. So tell us, um, Chris, about your work, uh, the work of Deep Intent, uh, how that's changed during the pandemic um, and, and sort of uh, the demands on your services and how your business has evolved. Yeah. So what we saw in our, you know, across our client base was that you know sales reps, uh, pharmaceutical sales reps, play a big part in the overall go-to-market and just consistency of just the the overall marketing for our clients and their their treatments and prescription drugs. So when COVID hit, a lot of our clients started to retract their in-person sales reps uh, to going into the office and you know educating the the healthcare providers and the other you know uh, healthcare healthcare facility and staff. With those retracted, there needed there was a a, a gap in the communication um, and actually the ability for the pharmaceuticals and the science community to receive inf new information about new drugs and treatments. So what we found was that the only way to do that was through non personal promotion and marketers at our, our clients increasingly turned towards turned to digital to actually be able to reach uh, healthcare providers across the United States. Um, so almost as a function of you know, the pandemic, we've seen an increased step up, uh, and in fact, a 3x step up in terms of the demand for our services to help to help identify and reach those those healthcare providers with messaging. On the flip side, on the patient side, you know, with more people stuck at home, people are streaming more than ever. So we actually saw a massive increase uh, in the connected television space and demand for CTV, um, in addition to just general digital advertising. So you know, with our platform, we're well positioned, right? We have technology that we've built to help identify patients based on conditions in a privacy safe way. Uh, we also have the ability to reach healthcare providers on a one-to-one -one way. So, you know, by having these capabilities, we offer a solution that helps uh, supplement kind of the, the lack of having that in-person uh, communication or sales rep sitting across the table and, and effectively delivers that, that message that needs to be heard. 
And as a DSP, uh, what are your clients looking for? What are your uh, the buyers looking for? What do they look to you for uh, that they wouldn't look for to, um, you know, one of the other DSPs? Yeah, yeah. So what we have is, you know, we, we kind of take stride and in, in differentiate on kind of three main pillars. We help with planning, activation, and, and measurement. Um, and we've built tools for all three of those pillars that are healthcare specific. So when you're trying to find the right, you know, the right physician to market to or the right patient to market to, we provide tools to allow our marketers to do that using clinical data in a privacy safe way. Um, and so once you find that audience, it's really simple to move that right into our DSP, serve media against them, and not just serve media against them, but actually measure which creatives, you know, which strategies, which tactics are actually driving the backend clinical performance or health outcomes for the patient population that they're looking to reach. So in, in short, it's a all-in-one platform that is built specifically for healthcare, um, which is a bit unlike uh, a bit unlike some of the other DSPs around the space. And finally, Chris, what's the uh, roadmap ahead for Deep Intent? Uh, what, how do you see the next 12 months, both uh, organizationally and in terms of uh, uh, business reach? Yeah, so organizationally, you know, we've actually doubled in size since the pandemic, and we plan to double again in 2021. Uh, we've been growing. This will be our fifth year of 3x growth. Um, so the demand for our products and services are, are only increasing. Um, and we think that, you know, digital has been coronated as being the, you know, primary way for, for our clients to reach their, their audiences. And so we continue to invest heavily in products and, and solutions that are going to help them connect in a more efficient way with those audiences to drive better health outcomes. Um, so our entire product roadmap for 2021 has more or less been planned out, um, but we are, we are super excited about what's to come and we have a lot of big, big announcements coming later this year.